Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Emily. Today's video is a Christmas DIY project video using wood. If you guys are ready, let's get started. This first project, I'm using these pieces of wood that I actually grabbed from Hobby Lobby. It is a four pack of like faux pallet wood. So if you have fence board or pallet wood, this would work perfectly fine for this project as well. I'm also using these set of stencils that I did get from Amazon. I will, I got them last year and I'm pretty sure I can still find them. I will link them in the description box if I can find them for you. I love these stencils. I made wood signs with them last year and I'm going to do something similar this year with them. So for these pieces of wood, they are about 24 inches long and I'm just cutting them in half um, so that they will fit the stencils perfectly. Um, the stencils are 12 by 12 um, squares, if I remember correctly. So this fits perfectly. So like I said, I'm just going to cut them down. I'm not going to sand them. Um, they have that rough look. They are a little textured, but they're not super textured to make the stencil difficult to use. So that's why I'm not going to sand these down. Now the cut edges, um, I am going to just be using dark and decrepit to kind of blend in to match the wood color that um, that this has. If you have antique wax from Waverly, that would work as well. So for these stencils, I'm actually going to be using bits and pieces of each stencil um, to make these individual signs. So I um, am going to be using chalk paint. Sorry about that. As I was recording, Trigger found the loudest toy that he could find. So anyways, I am going to be using um, an off-white colored chalk paint. The great thing about stencils, you can use any color that you want for whatever sign um, you are making. So I'm going to be using this white color for all of the signs and I am taking a stencil brush and I am going, I am dabbing the stencil brush straight up and down. I'm doing kind of I'm, I'm really trying not to put a lot of pressure um, on the from the stencil on stencil brush onto the stencil and I also if you've noticed I am kind of offloading my paint so I'm dipping my stencil or my brush into the paint and then for not this one right here because it's it has such an open area but especially for the wording I am going to be offloading most of the paint onto the paper towel so that I don't get any bleed through from the from using the stencil um, the stencil brush onto the stencil and I got zero bleed through I was really really happy um, these stencils just take some time um, and a little bit of patience if you just keep going up and down um, then and using a little bit of paint at a time if you need to do a couple layers of paint that is a lot better than having too much paint on your brush because then you will get bleed through signs that I made these stencils were wide enough to basically fit that the 12 inch piece of wood this one sign was smaller and I wanted to fill in the space on the sides using some twine and I'm I decided to use Baker's twine instead of the regular twine just to add some Christmas color to it um, you could have just left this alone or if you wanted to even add some greenery to the sides that would look really pretty as well but I'm just adding three I'm wrapping the Baker's twine around three times on each side and just adding a little bit of hot glue onto the back to hold it in place. And these signs are done.
Okay, I know these look like pumpkins because they are, but this project, we are going to be making wood Christmas presents. And I had these leftover wood pumpkins from a couple videos ago. So I'm going to be turning these into the wood presents. So what I'm going to be doing is just cutting off the middle portion that looks like the stem. I'm cutting it off so the top is flush. It's all the same height so that it will look like a present. If you are interested in how I made these in the first place so that you can make your own pumpkins or you can make your own Christmas presents, I will leave the video um, link in the description for you so you can see how I made it. I do have a step-by-step -step process on making these wood pumpkins. So once these are all cut down, um, I believe the measurements are the smallest one is 10 inches, the medium is 14 inches, and the tall one is 20 inches. I believe those were, the, were the, the three different heights. So I decided that I was going to sand these down and give them a really good distress. These pieces were sealed with the spar urethane, um, which is good for outside use because I originally was going I made these so that they could go on a front porch so it did have a very good thick coat that I was trying to sand down and I wanted to paint them individual like different colors but when I started to distress them back I actually really liked how neutral and distressed they looked and I remembered that I have all these different color ribbons so I decided to keep the wood pieces themselves neutral and then jazz them up with the different ribbons that I have. So for these presents I'm going to be taking two strips of ribbon. I'm going to go one obviously you can see is vertical and then the other strip I am going to go horizontal and when I do the horizontal piece I'm going to have it not in not in the middle but a little bit higher up um, that's just how I wanted to do it um, if you're making these for yourself you can add the ribbon any way or orientation that you want um, I just really liked how this looked so I'm going to be doing three different ribbons for each size for all of these um, piece, these presents I am going to be using the same greenery and these are greenery that picks or they are from picks from Hobby Lobby that I have cut off the pieces so that it goes a longer way. I'm not using one whole pick per, per item. Um, so I've had these for a year now and I know they still sell them at Hobby Lobby. Um, these, these picks I'm talking about. So I am going to be using the staple gun to attach the ribbon and the greenery because I don't want anything to happen to them. I am going to put these in my booth for Christmas time. Our Christmas refresh is November 7th, I think is our vendor night. And then what is it like the 9th or the 10th? A couple days later is going to be the Christmas open house. So I will be getting the booth all flipped and rearranged on the 7th for Christmas and I definitely want to have these pieces in there. I'm working on two different hutches. I'm going to be doing a complete different look in my booth. I'm really excited and I cannot wait to decorate it for Christmas. So I cannot wait to share that with you guys as well. For the other pieces of these Christmas presents, I have these bells that I also grabbed from Hobby Lobby last year, a huge pack for only a couple dollars, and I am going to attach them to the greenery pick with twine so that, again, they aren't going to go anywhere, and the only thing I'm using the hot glue gun on are these, um, oh my gosh, it's not acorn, what, pine, pine cones. Yes, these little tiny pine cones. Again, I also did grab this huge pack of pine cones from Hobby Lobby this year in the Christmas section. They do have them in the fall um, section, but the Christmas section was 50% off, so you actually got a better deal. Fall stuff was only 40% off. Um, although now at this point, they probably don't really have any much any more of the fall items, so disregard that. But yes, these are in the Christmas section, and these pieces are done. I really hope you guys like them. These are my these are like probably my favorite things I've made in such a long time. So I cannot wait to hear what you guys think.
All right, for our last project, we're going to be giving this cutting board a makeover. So I did thrift this a while ago. I did give it a good sand so that it was nice and smooth. Um, you could still see plenty of cut marks, but it was, I did smooth it out. I believe I used like um, 180 grit and then 220 to smooth it all out. I taped off the handle portion because I did really like the natural color of the wood. Um, so I wanted to leave that portion untouched. So I'm going to be giving the rest of this cutting board um, I think I did two coats. Um, oh, before I did those coats of the white chalk paint, I did give the cutting board a good coat of shellac to avoid any bleed through. So once the chalk paint dried, I did give it a good sanding so I could have it distressed. And then I decided that I was going to use a stencil and a transfer on this um, cutting board. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So I, I am going to be using one of the stencils from the first project and I'm going to use just the bottom wording and I'm going to layer them. So like there's individual words, it's like cookies, pies, hot cocoa, and, and something else. So I decided to, um, to stack the words and then I'm going to do a transfer on the other side. I really wanted Christmas vibe and because this is a cutting board I thought it would be really cute for in a kitchen or even if you have your own coffee bar or tea bar or whatever I thought it would be really cute for the holidays so I went with more of the food theme which is why I picked the hot cocoa and pies and all of that part of the stencil and I am using the candy cane transfer. <laughs> Alright, this candy cane transfer is from the IOD transfer set um, candy cane cottage and again just like last time I can never find the burnishing tool that it comes with when I need it so I'm using my Cricut scraper um, I will say this was not the best choice to use the Cricut scraper was actually scraping off the black grid lines on the top of this transfer and it actually um, chipped off onto the white paint and kind of smeared. So I was like, all right, well, I'm just going to continue with it. I'm going to distress it. So when I distressed the candy cane transfer, some of the red, um, part of the transfer bled onto the white paint as well. So I just touched it up with some chalk paint and then I sealed it by spraying it with, um, the, uh, polycrylic spray and, I, that's how I sealed it and then I'm just going to attach a ribbon and some picks to it and then this one is done I really hope you enjoyed these projects. I cannot wait for the next couple videos I went to the Dollar Tree and I bought like 20 Christmas trees um, They were just all there and I was I couldn't I couldn't help myself So I cannot wait to do more Christmas DIY projects with these trees. So stay tuned and I hope you guys enjoyed <music>
I hope you all enjoyed these projects and please let me know in the comments which one was your favorite. I love that gingerbread sign. It fits perfect above my coffee space for my coffee bar. So I plan on making a couple others for my coffee bar area for the holiday time. So definitely let me know which one was your favorite. And if you are interested in more Christmas DIY projects, whether they're thrift flips or DIY projects, then please consider subscribing. Stick around, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye guys.